Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today this is day three of our multiple logistic regression series. There's a five part series that we're doing here. We've already done the first two parts. The first one was exploratory data analysis, loading the data and then looking at the data to see if we could see any patterns, uh, probabilities, distributions, bias, and to identify things like that with it. Second day was uh, the video on training and test data sets and building those. This is day three where we're going to get the predictor values with two different methods. And there's a reason why we want to use two or more methods, at least two. Because one may not always work with every single type of data set you have out there. It's why the second one will help back that up or give you, you know, different information or more leading information. So let's look at this. So here is our first. We're going to do random forest and then we're going to do the Baruta method. So first random forest, we got to load in the library, right? You're going to load this in, make sure the second or the F, the second word, is capitalized. And then what we're going to do is this piece of code right here, where we run the random force function on our predictor variable and all of the other variables, all the other fields that we want to look at and measure them. And then, of course, the name of our data frame, which is test data one. We're going to put that in output.forest one. Then we run this one, which is the importance of output.forest1 through the random forest. And what that does, it gives you this right down below here. So what this is, your mean decreasing G, I, and I, which is going to give you the, the higher it is, the better it is, the lower it is, the weaker these numbers are. So obviously, if you look at date Y, it's almost zero. Uh, that one's very low. That's this whole row right here. So we want to ignore that one. But we do have some higher numbers, and this is going to vary based on your data. You're going to have some times where you run on a data set and you'll have numbers over 100. And in this case, we don't, but that doesn't mean they're bad. So we have here, our high ones are going to be violent crime, oops, ratio, these two, and then you have total sales over here are your highest, okay? So that gives me an idea that I want to pay more attention to the higher ones than the lower ones. But what if I want to see it a little bit better? So that's where the Bruta method comes in. I love the Bruta method. It just makes it very visual. So what we do is we load in this library just like this. Make sure you load these libraries in if you don't, or if you need, don't have them already installed, what you need to do is install that packages and then quotation marks and then the uh, name of the uh, uh, library. So in this case, once we've done that, then what we want to do is do a trace with the Bruta function on day type, right? That's our field that we want to look at against all the other ones, that's why this dot is here. Instead of having to list them all like this, I just put the dot does the same thing. And um, omit any uh, blanks from there. And so we run this, and it puts it in the Bruta output, and it's going to run, and then it runs through the whole thing, and then we want to print it, right? So we're going to just, it's very simple, just print the Bruta output. Okay, so let's print that. And here it is. Now, this is not done yet. You're going to see a visual in a little bit. But let me just show you. Right now, you already know you have one tentative attribute, average T, right? It's tentative. Doesn't mean it's bad. We've got four that are confirmed to be bogus or unimportant. That's date Y. We already know that. Rank one, row, and weak number. They're basically worthless. Average T is tentative, which means it's in the middle. And then we've got five confirmed important. Ratio, total sales, transactions, units, and violent crime. So if we look at what we looked at before with the random forest right here, look at the, the data you're looking at, okay? Total sales, transactions, units, they were all positive, right? And average T was a little bit higher than the others. It's a little bit low, though. So average T, and we saw that in the previous data, may not be as strong, but that's fine. And um, so next what we're going to do, that just gives a breakout of what is better, middle of the road, and worth ignoring. Then we're going to do is this next line. We're going to say we want them to be confirmed or tentative. We don't want the bottom ones, right? And what we're going to do is put them into this. So it's called Bruta sign if names of the Bruta output final decision, okay, in confirmed and tentative, right? So we already know that there's some confirmed and tentative, right? Because so you can see it right here. Confirmed, tentative is this one right here. And so we're going to put that in there. Let's just run this. And that runs. It doesn't really do anything yet. Next, we got to print it. So now let's take that and print that. 
and this will give us our significant values, right? So it's the same thing. All this basically does is tell us the names of them again, just like you saw above. That's all. So this step was really not necessary, but maybe you want to do that to show the uh, values of the different parts. Now, the next part is we're going to plot it. So what we're going to do is take the original Bruta output that we created right here, based off of this. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this right here. We're going to have our X label be, or... Uh, the variable importance, and uh, what we're going to do is the Bruta output, and then there's uh, sex dot axis, sex is C E X dot axis equals dot seven, L A S equals two, and this is going to give us what we want. Watch this. Oh, we have to. The problem is that we have our little print screens way over there, so it's not going to work yet. Now let's take it and do it again. This is actually a pretty cool graph. For visualizing stuff okay now the problem is that we have it too small because we set that before so what we need to do is go back up here see these guys these par mf rows so what we're going to do is bring that down here right above the brood of things let's put that right here so remember that because it'll remember what you set it for so right now it's probably set for not three by three for nine graphs so you really can't see it very well can you so if we make that instead, this, one comma one is one graph. So let's do that, oops, and then we'll do that plot. So let's do that right there. So let's just do that again, okay? And there we go, doesn't that look a lot better? So this is the Baruta method. And remember we had, what, a tentative is yellow. See it right there, that's the tentative one. The green guys are all important variables of varying importance. And then the low, real low score ones that are indeterminate or lesser are listed with red and blue. Okay? So what we want to pay attention to is the green ones. And if you look at that, ratio is obviously way up here, followed by violent crime, total sales, then comes units and transactions. So the most important is going to be in this case the ratio of violent crime and total sales so that's what this does it shows you the importance it shows you the, the levels of it and puts it in a very graphical way so it's kind of cool or visual way so you got the list before in the numbers now you've got this and if you needed to put this in documentation for users uh, as to why you use the predictors that you did and you eliminated some others this is perfect you just put this in your snapshot this and here's your answer this is what I did uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful with these two methods. So we got the random forest model in here and the uh, Baruta method in here to quickly give us and break down our variables. And this could be as many variables as we want. We could have 100 variables in here. We could have 15 variables. It doesn't matter what the data is. It'll tell me what's important and what should be ignored. So thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe and like if you have not done that already. And be sure and share this with your friends and uh, others so they can learn from this too. Thanks again and uh, stay tuned as part four will be coming up next and in part four what we're going to do is build the actual lo multiple logistic regression model and we're going to get the uh, prediction values based off of that and then in part five we'll do more testing of it. So I'll show you all the code for that and more and you'll be able to do some really cool uh, uh, analyses with these based on multiple uh, logistic regression. Thanks again. Have a great day.